thanks for joining us for a final stop at today's crop walk. Uh, this massive crop behind me is uh, the ICDC hemp variety trials. So Dale, hemp, uh, it's, is it a crop that's fairly easy to include in your crop mix in Saskatchewan? Uh, yes, uh, Joel, it certainly it can be. Um, fiber and they tend to be a lot taller which uh, and they're not usually ones that are chosen to be grown here in Saskatchewan but for demonstration purposes we have some here uh, in this trial as well. Okay so uh, what, what would uh, you typically grow hemp for in Saskatchewan at the moment? Well the biggest uh, market for hemp grown here in Saskatchewan right now is in the food area. Okay. It, it can be utilized for feed but uh, much like uh, faba bean it's it's a volume thing, so volume needs to be uh, there before uh, any substantial amount gets utilized for feed. But really, the, the, the food market has been big uh, for hemp, uh, hemp hearts and hemp seed, hemp oil, mm -hmm. all hemp powders for protein mixes for your smoothies in the morning. They all they all gained a lot of momentum because of the um, uh, fact that it's a it's a plant-based protein that uh, is offered to those people who uh, want to nor need to move away from uh, animal-based proteins in, in their diet or, or want to and uh, consequently hemp has been filling that, that uh, need. It also is very high in a lot of nutritional qualities like the omega-3, omega-6 has got the right balance that's needed for, uh, for that uh, uh, part of uh, consumption as well. Okay. So uh, with hemp I understand it's a similar plant to cannabis which has been getting a lot of attention in the media recently. Is there any medicinal quality to this plant, or has that been uh, completely bred out? Uh, well, it's it's been researched by people like Dr. Stephen Laviolette at the University of Western Ontario, and others who are looking at the CBD, the cannabinoid uh, known as CBD, cannabidol, and uh, that's a part of the plant that uh, contains some uh, aspects that uh, might have an imp impact. It's showing a lot of promise of having uh, results in treating. That people suffer from so uh, a lot of hope in that regard and the other good thing about it too is that uh, preliminary investigation into that product uh, seems to demonstrate there are no side effects hmm. contrary to what is currently being used in, in pharmaceutical uh, products that have uh, a lot of uh, negative side effects right. so even though hemp doesn't it contains very low levels of THC it may have other compounds that may be beneficial nutraceutically or medicinally that's that's correct and and uh, you mentioned THC that's the component of uh, hemp that is as uh, uh, regulated uh, all varieties that are uh, approved by Health Canada have to have 0.3 percent or lower THC levels uh, and uh, THC is the substance in, in the narcotic cannabis that uh, that gives one the high and uh, uh, contrary to that, cannabidol does exactly the opposite, so it's the same same plant producing uh, different compounds and it does the opposite and actually reduces your anxiety. So hmm. it's totally opposite and it's kind of, kind of um, interesting that it does that. Yeah, sure. Well, maybe when some of this research is done, there might be another marketing opportunity for growing this crop. Well, I, I think that's uh, already there. Oh, and, yeah. uh, uh, companies are already starting to look at that. I think uh, the opening of the um, of the regulatory system allowing growers of hemp to harvest the parts of the plant that contain CBD. Uh, a recent uh, change in, in the regulation is uh, quite received quite enthusiastically by hemp growers and by the hemp association. So uh, I think that's a new area that uh, will develop fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. You keep mentioning the word regulation a lot, so do producers need to jump through quite a few hoops in order to have this on their field? You have to have a license. You need to apply for the license through Health Canada and on their website all of the details are, are described quite well um, and some of those uh, requirements are actually being modified a bit so they're not as, as uh, difficult as they may have been at one time in the past and a little easier for growers to obtain it. But nevertheless you need to have a license need to grow the crop the proper variety 
and uh, variety for your area. So uh, all of those factors will make a, a difference in uh, your, your uh, final result. Uh, some of the agronomic factors as well will make a difference, like time of seeding. Uh, it's a plant that's very really sensitive to daylight. daylight. And so if you seed it too early, you can get a lot of uh, vegetative growth. So you seed it a little bit later in the season, mid-May or, or up to about uh, June, uh, I think June 20th, if I'm not mistaken on that, <coughs> would be a, a, approximately the right time. Then you don't get as much vegetative growth and you wouldn't get as much height, right. which fits in better to uh, combining uh, purposes at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. So this crop looks like it would be very difficult to combine. Would this yeah. cause quite a bit of issues, you think? Well, for sure. You wouldn't be combining this type of plant. Uh, this plant would be cut for fiber purposes and it's got to be retted. And uh, that market is, is starting to show some signs of uh, of development as of late. Um, uh, various companies like Ford are looking at it for uh, materials for car components. Uh, it's being utilized already for some cases of, of developing bricks that are used for building buildings and things like that because of the R value that it provides. And uh, uh, you know, there's there's probably numerous other factors too, like textiles too that it used to be used quite often in. Uh, times uh, in Europe, Western Europe, uh, and in the U.S. during World War II, World War I, various textiles, and uh, it, uh, it, it can provide that again. And uh, if, if it fits in economically with those companies, I'm sure they're going to do that. Right. Huh. So it seems like it's a crop with a lot of potential anyway. Yeah. Uh, it offers that green side of, uh, of things that producer, uh, that consumers are looking for now, that uh, they want to have that green kind of, of uh, product available to them. Maybe just one more question before we conclude today. Uh, how is it for growing? Is it uh, fairly easy to grow for a farmer? Is there any options for pesticides or things like that? Well, um, not, not really. It's, uh, there aren't a lot of uh, options available for, for uh, growing hemp just yet. But again, there are some things in the minor use program that are being looked at. Uh, there, there might be something that uh, is currently available for controlling grassy weeds in hemp. I think uh, there might be a minor use registration on that that came through, uh, but really not a lot though. Okay, great to know. And if there's uh, no questions from the audience, I think uh, that will conclude today's crop box. So thank you, Dale, for coming out again. And Dale Rizula, you can find his contact information on the ministry's website if you have any more questions about these specialty crops. Thank you.